Hey, I'm Joe Connolly, WCBS Business News reporter with producer Neil A. Caruso, with somebody who will give you good ideas if you plan to start your own business. And the data says more people than ever are doing that. Ramon Ray is the founder of Smart Hustle Magazine. He's a well-known organizer of business education and networking events, really good networking events in the New York area. I think nationally too now, and I've been reading his email newsletter for years. Well, Raymond's focus right now is on solopreneurs, people who run a business on their own. Maybe they just start that way. Maybe they plan to stay solo. So Ramon, briefly tell us, if you will, what are the top three things people thinking about starting a business on their own should know and think about? Absolutely. And Joe, it's good to be here. And thank you for having me and the whole team at CBS and et cetera. So thank you, Joe. Really appreciate being with you and the leadership you provide. I think three things that people need to know about starting their own business, especially as they're solo business owners. And there's so many things, but I think three things I can think of is one, it's harder than you think. Two, it's a lie that only big billion dollar brands can succeed. And I think point three, you can scale the business to the size that you want and be happy with that and live the life you want you can do it. Those are three things I would say. Those are good. Should you start with a client or three in mind or actually committed or what? Yeah, I think if you're talking to those, Joe, who have a full-time job, let's talk to those people. They have a full-time job. They're thinking of exiting. As you know a bit my story, Joe, I was fired from the United Nations. And so I'm grateful. I had some money in the bank. I'll just say the number. I had a $40,000 client. That's all I had, Joe. But it was able to give me enough cushion and a starting point, a runway to begin my full-time business. So I think starting off with not starting off with zero is definitely the way to go because you have a little bit of cushion emotionally. That's where the battle is. And then also in your actual bank account. And so people understand more fully, that was a $40,000 client for a one-year retainer or for a one-time service or just what, Ramon? That was it. Meaning the point being, they owed me $40,000 before I got fired from the UN. So every oh, month we took a draw on that, if that's helpful. So for somebody, it could be 10, 20, 30. You could be staying on your mama's couch. You could have money from another source but have some runway. So in my case, yes, that gave me the cushion that I needed. Thank God that I could feed my family for how long that money lasted until we were able to get more revenue from other sources. And then as you were drawing down that, you were finding new clients to come in. Correct. And it got scary though, Joe, there was a point where it got right to the edge, but oh. thankfully the goodwill I had built up over the years that kicked in. So that's kind of part of that. Have that money there before you leave or before you have to start, but then also have some what they'll call emotional runway, pending clients that, you know, are in your wheelhouse that you can turn to. And some people make their former employer their first client. Is that generally a good or a bad idea, Ramon? I think it's a good starting point, but I wouldn't have them just as that. You never want to have, especially for us solo people, having one client as your main source. So I think it's a good starting point, but you definitely, if I had to give a number, have three to five, or depending on the industry, as it were, have it in there. Because just having that only employer, if things go wrong, if they don't like you, you the good boss you had, say boss was my, say Neil was my boss, he, he then goes to start his own business. Now it's just me and Joe, and Joe said <laughs> we're both going to let us go. <laughs> What happened? <laughs> yeah, and then Neil lets us both go. You you have to be careful though about not working for the former employer just as much now for less pay and no benefits. Do not fall into that trap. Joe, you're absolutely right. And that's 100 percent right. Because you lean back into then why'd you leave your job? So absolutely. That's why having multiple clients forces you to tell the employer, hey, thanks so much. Nope, I I'm I'm with you three hours this week. So Joe, what you said was right on point. Absolutely. Great point. Neil. Joe, Ramon, great to see you. Um, you. So tricky to navigate that, though, when you're about to leave or you're considering starting your own business. How do you be upfront with your employer? How do you make it a win win for you so that you're you know, using that credibility that you have to actually grow your business? Yeah, Neil, I just wanted to thank you as well, just since you're in the camera now, just to say thank you, Neil, for carrying the flag with Joe Connolly of Small <laughs> Business. I'll put it that way. You both are a fantastic pair and do a great job. So I just want to give you right to hand man. <laughs> yes, indeed. And say thank you, Neil, for all that you do. But you're right, Neil. It is a very, very uh, tricky thing for sure to do that. And I think that you have to be careful. So I think that as small business owners, as we grow, 
as we grow, I think that you you want to be careful of a you don't want your eggs in in one basket. Um, and I think that you know because things can go off the rail. I'll put it that way. So here's a few things to do. One, you need to know who your employer is at the corporate level, and I think you need to know who they are at the human level. Those two things, Neil, can jam you up. Let's say you have a great boss, and we'll play here to us here. Joe Connolly loves me. He's a great boss, Ramon. I want the best for you. I'm fully affirm with your ambitions. That's a great human. Yeah. But maybe the corporate company says no, no, no. So those are the two things you have to navigate. And exactly, Neil, what I went through when I was working at the United Nations, my boss loved me. But then politics came into play. That jammed me up. So that's a real case scenario you want to navigate. And I must say, Neil, one thing to tell people, maybe keep that close to your chest. Keep it on the down low. Don't break any laws. It's just you don't have to blab about it until you get some traction. You've talked to your family about what you're going to do. Because, Neil, you're right. Many small businesses, they, they want to start in their cells, but they start too soon. They're forced to do it because then the business fires them or it begets, or they wonder, why are my responsibilities lessened? Why am I not getting the promotion? Well, you told everybody on your job. Screw you. I'm leaving in six months. Nah, be careful of that. Right. How do you do that respectfully then? Well, I think it's, again, that's where having a heart-to-heart -heart talk and understanding who your boss is, let's say. That's just the human dimension. Know who you're talking to. That's really, really important. And I think point two, then being very clear, what are the rules at your job? I know some people, some friends of mine, their employers are like, have a side gig. Whatever you do after 6 p.m. or 5, we don't care. Some are like, no, this is not cool. So I think that's really understanding that, being very careful. And remember, Neil, that some people may say one thing and mean another thing. There's there's your peers involved. So when things go wrong, are they going to say, oh, Ramon, we noticed you had a side gig. Maybe that report was late because you weren't fully with us. So it's something to be very tricky as for sure. Mm, interesting. Joe, once uh, an executive told me that uh, you should be loyal to people, not necessarily companies. I yeah. like that for sure. You know, there's a phrase comes to mind too. We talk about a nine to five job. I've seen some people starting referring to a growing side business as a five to nine job, five to nine PM. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ramon, <laughs> I like tell, it. Tell us more about pricing and selling your service. Yeah. How do you get those first one or two clients? A lot of people who were very good working at a big company never sold anything. The work was brought into them. Yeah, Tell I, us. Absolutely, Joe. I think a few things trip up people. I think, one, all of this should learn how to be better sales people, as it were. You know, you've done that sometimes, Joe, in rooms. I've seen you at the WC business, but how many people are in sales and you kind of needle people? All of you should have raised your hand. So that's one. All of us just be better sales people, which is about listening and knowing the customer need. I think point two, there's no shame. Start with the people who already know you. I think our mutual friend, Joe, uh, John Jans, Duct Tape Marketing, he talks about no like, and trust. So number two, start with people who you already know and let them know, hey, I'm in business right now. I'm a painter. I'm a consultant. I'm a contractor. How can I serve you? Number three, my friend Adrian Miller talks about this. It's not necessarily me getting money from Joe, me getting money from Neil. It's them referring other people to me. Oftentimes we think it's that direct connection. Oftentimes it's just getting others to keep their eye out for me. Those are three things I would say. Then how do you say, well, this will cost sure. to somebody you know, maybe even, how do you say, I will need $3,000 to do this project next week? Yeah, pricing is a very challenging thing for many small businesses, Joe, as you and Neil know very well. Two things I would say to that. One, I would encourage people, remember, we are small businesses. We are growing our solo businesses. You're not competing against the big boxes. So I would encourage you, as another friend of mine, Seth Godin, talks about, we should be selling at a premium. And number two, understand their pain point. If you take a look at your aisles of your average drugstore supermarket, people are getting more pain relief than they're getting more vitamins. Find the pain point of the people you seek to serve. That's number two. And sell to the pain point. Four, don't sell necessarily to the features so much. Features are nice. But if you find out, here's how it benefits you, you will win every time. But I must say, Joe Neal, indeed, pricing is a, one of the biggest challenging points of us very small businesses because we're small. We're not selling 10,000 items or 100,000 items. We just need, what, three or four clients depending on the business, a month, and we're doing pretty well. 
So pricing is challenging, but uh, be confident, be confident what you're doing. And if you portray confidence, you'll win that game. Yeah. That, that leads us to scaling Ramon. Uh, when you're a solopreneur, you know, you're hitting the payment, you're doing everything. You're doing sales, you're doing bookkeeping, you're doing the work. Um, how do you actually take it to the next level? You know, should people be thinking ahead and when they're actually starting their business and developing their business plan of how are we going to scale this? Sure. I think it's a great question, Neil. And here's actually out of my own playbook. You all have watched my own journey over the years. I make no bones about it. I'm not a multi, you know, 10, 20 million dollar business. By God's grace, we do very well. I'm a small team of five. But here's what I do. One, I'm stealing a page from Jim Collins uh, book, A Flywheel. His, his book, really, everybody should check that out, Flywheel. He talks about understanding the core things in your business that make it work. Have that very dialed in. So that's one. What's the flywheel of your business that makes it run over and over and over again? Number two, be very clear on what you do best. In the case of my business, one thing I do well is sales and business development. That's the genius that Ramon can do for my clients. Number three, Neil, I have an executive assistant, and this is struggling with many of the very, very small businesses. They're literally growing solo, but I encourage everybody, get an executive assistant who can do one of two things for you as you're just starting out. A, help you manage your time and your calendar so you can say no to things that are not a priority and yes to others. And number two, in my case, her name is Jamie, online business manager, some people may call it. She's the guru of funnels, connectivity, websites, images, all that nasty stuff that Ramon could do. She does faster and better. So I hope that's a bit helpful, but time management uh, and scaling to your size, Neil. That's, I guess, what we're talking about, as you and Joe said. We're not at big companies. It's just me. This is just me here in this little room. But I can do the work of a larger company, as it were, because of my team. So I have a social media manager. I have a video editor. I have a graphics person. All 1099s, by the way. So to be clear, I don't have employees. They're contractors. And I get them off the very popular contracting site. I can mention if you want, but the popular contracting site. Mm -hmm. I built my whole team for years. Ramon, do one or two stories come to mind of solopreneurs who grew impressively fast in revenues to you within the first year or two? How did they do that? Yeah, I think it's very, uh, very doable. My friend Elaine Fodelt, you may know her, Joe. She has a book, The One Million Dollar Business or something like that. And she profiles a lot of these people. And I think the way of scaling fast is by one of two things. A, many of these companies are e-commerce. So they learn the game well of either flipping products. They learn the game well of online advertising and et cetera. That's a whole science. And I'm sure you all have talked to e-commerce business as well. That's how you can skyrocket very well. Second thing is, again, taking a page from my buddy Mike Michalowicz's book, Profit First, focusing not on the gross revenue, Joe Neal, but on the profitability. So companies like mine, which are not high growth e-commerce, we are highly profitable. We can pay ourselves well, and we're still living a good life. So it depends on how you want to scale and how you want to do that with uh, e-commerce and a large gross revenue or being a smaller but highly profitable business. Either way, you can grow fast. And part of that for the latter is to being very dialed in who is my customer. And I must say, not being in a low margin business, being in a business where you can charge $300, $400 an hour, where you can tell one client it's $25,000 for XYZ. That's the way to do that. Either way, take your path. Neil. Yeah. And, and Joe, you know, you and I have heard a lot about um, businesses that. Uh, have actually focused on the bigger clients and uh, you know small businesses are nimble they're able to serve those clients but it's hard to convince them that you have the resources to do that how do you go about that conversation approach a big firm and say i can do this for you and do it at a high level that meets the demands of such a massive firm whether it's a you know an international company or a, a you know national one how do you go about that and uh, and convince them that you can do that? You can serve them. It's very hard, Neil, and you're right. And I think there's two ways about it, I would say. And I've done some of these in my own journey. I think one is if you're trying to bid or sell for a larger project, don't try to pretend and say, we, 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 we have 100 people back to when you don't. They'll smell through that. So you can't sell on that. But you can sell them on the passion and commitment and your hopefully past success and talk about we're small, but we're nimble. 
Maybe we can be more price competitive as it were. We have an amazing team that will serve your needs and we will be your only focus. So you're not going to have to call 1-800-whatever and give us a customer service number. When Neil calls, I say, yes, sir, I know your name. So that's one way to sell that on the bigger projects, Neil. And, and, and that's one way. Number two, then I would say, Neil, also another way to get in the door of large companies is sell to the executive especially for the small businesses right in the CBS audience who are like the coaches and trainers and consultants. Don't try to sell, again, I'll take Joe as an example. Nia. Don't try to sell Joe. Can I serve the whole company? Hey, Joe, just swipe your credit card and let me train you, Joe. Let me just do something for you. Once he sees that and he's satisfied, now it can extend. So either route, just to summarize that, is sell on the team you have, the passion, the commitment to get the bigger, more complex projects. It's doable. It's harder takes a longer runway or definitely target the individual executive who needs help in their team with their life. Rock that. And it's ha Neil, I had one billion dollar client. We all know I help one executive with one event they have. They've been now sharing my name within the company. So for one engagement, I've now had three or four or five different engagements throughout 2021. Wow. Wow. That's so you get the whole great you get way to get your foot in the door. Ramon. Yes. yes. As you were talking, I remember a point that I might have heard at one of your events, Ramon, on the topic of pricing for mm. people who are new to selling. And it is that many people who are in salary jobs right now have no idea how much they make an hour. They've never divided it out. 250 workdays a year divided by five. And... and that is a great way, it was pointed out, to start pricing your service and then you add to it. But you may not even realize that the marketplace, your current company, has already placed an hourly rate on your work. So true, Joe. You're exactly right. And I think that what I can tell people is one way to figure that out. And again, talking to the smallest of small businesses here, let's say in the Northeast, right? Us people, you want to pay yourself 150, 200, whatever it is. If you're in Texas, Atlanta, a little different, but let's say 200,000. That Now keep in mind, the IRS is going to take their portion from that, which you're paying yourself. And Joe, then I want to say start there, 200,000. Now, maybe triple that. So that means your company, Joe, you may want to aim for a healthy Northeast business. Maybe you want to generate half a million a year, so you can pay 50,000, 75, 100,000 to an assistant. You're paying yourself 200,000, taxes taken out of that, and then you have some cushion or overhead if that's helpful. But you're right, people think they're saying, oh, I get paid $30 an hour, $50 an hour. No, when you're in your own business, that's not enough. You didn't account for the stapler, the books, the light, the, 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 the microphone, <laughs> everything you gotta buy, the lamp behind you to go with that. That's wow. so true. So true. And yeah. it's hard to come up with that that price point. But that, that lays it out pretty well, Ramon. Thank you. And uh, you're passionate about it, Ramon. What drove you to go on your own? I think one is, Joe, I love the independence of entrepreneurship. The hustle, as Gary Vee talks about getting punched in the face over and over again. To me, it's a turn on. So I really enjoy it, Joe. The thrill of being just there, having to sell. I like it. And I encourage those listening to us, you have to have that passion somewhere. And I think point two, as I get older, Joe, I'll be turning a 50, in fact, this year, is that I'm really, my mindset is turning, maybe it's maturing. How can I make more impact? So I've been blessed that I've made some good money and I'm generating money now and business is good. I'm blessed with that. Some people, it's not the case. So now Ramon can think, how can I make a bigger impact? In my personal life, to some young men I mentor, and also to reach more and more small businesses. So I hope that wasn't too corny, but uh, that's what I think about. Are you kidding? Not corny at all. That's what that's what it's all about, Ramon. Yeah. And uh, I can see that that passion to help people uh, drives you. Ramon is also the author of the Facebook Guide to Small Business Marketing that a lot of people may want to take a look at. So Ramon, what is the website? What's the best website for people to go to find you and all of your products and services and advice. Sure, I appreciate that. Best one is smarthustle.com, smarthustle.com, or people can check out if they want to get to know me a little better, ramonray.com. But Joe, it's been a pleasure to be here with you and Neil. That's ramonray.com or smarthustle.com. As you know, small business excites me all day long. It's a great resource. Thanks, Ramon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great to see you again. You too, brother.